welcome to the RAC, Rural Art Connection, the place where your boredom ends and creativity begins. Today, we are going to be working on... In honor of this creepy Halloween season, I wanted to retell some creepy things my children have told me in real life while we draw one of my favorite Pokemon, Duskull. Raising children is always difficult. However, the difficulty level elevates to an extreme level when your children say things that terrify you. My family lived on the Navajo Indian Reservation teaching school from 2010 to 2016. We enjoyed so much of our time there and still continue to communicate with many of our former co-workers and students. My oldest daughter, who is now 11, was one and a half through about five during our time there on the reservation. She remembers only a select few moments from the incidents I'm about to retell to you. I'm half Filipina, so I try to teach my children what little Tagalog or Bicolana that I know or understand. One of our favorite words in Bicol was mumo, the word for spirit or ghost. Many times, my daughter would be with me at the school during all hours of the night and day while I worked on assignments, making copies, and general preparations for my classes. Several times, while coming back from the copy room, which was located in the library of this particular school, my then two-year-old daughter froze in place in the hallway, directly at the end of the hall outside of my classroom, and just stared. She would stare either at the floor or at the wall where it met the ceiling at a 90 degree angle or, like I said, at the floor where it met the wall. Her body would be still and her eyes would be unfocused, almost as if she was looking past the wall to something beyond. Most of the scenarios played out like this because this happened more than once. Baby, come on, we have to go to mommy's room now. She wouldn't respond to me, still just staring intensely at the corner near the ceiling or the floor. Little one, what's wrong? We have to go to mommy's classroom now. We can't play in the hall. In a small, distant voice, she might res respond to me. Mama. Trying not to freak out and keep my voice as even as possible, I would respond with, what? What do you mean, love? Mama. There. And she would lift her tiny little hand and point at the corner that she was staring at. <laughs> the hairs on the back of my neck and my arms would immediately stand up and I could feel the adrenaline starting to pump into my legs, preparing me to run. At that point, I would grab her by her little hand, telling her, well, tell them bye-bye, we have to go now. At that point, I was too shaken to continue working, so I would pack up whatever I needed to finish, and we would immediately head to our house, which was located behind the school. My daughter was always calm, never showed any signs of being scared, worried, or even concerned. She seemed to be a mix between curious, bored, or even maybe unimpressed with what she was looking at. Her expression was always very flat and relaxed. Most of these incidents happened if I was at school late, between 10 and midnight. Often my daughter would sleep in a sleeping bag in my classroom while I worked. Not the best parenting technique, I know, but I had to do what I had to do, and I've been a known workaholic. As I said, our houses were located directly behind the school in a kind of little teacher village looking setup. We all had our own little house and it looked like a regular housing development of about 50 or so houses, maybe not that many. Uh, 
about three or so minutes behind the school. We had an elementary, a middle school, and a high school respectively, all beside each other, football field, and then directly behind those were our little housing complex. When my daughter was about four, the mumu seemed to follow us home. One evening, we were getting ready to go to bed. I was walking around, making sure that the doors were locked, the windows were shut, when my daughter came and got my attention. There's a man outside my window. He wants to come inside. I ran to her window and looked outside. I didn't see anything. I don't see anyone. Oh, the mama were chasing him. He had yellow eyes. I pulled her curtains shut and made her sleep in my bed with my husband and I for that night, just in case someone was planning to break into our house. I don't think I slept at all that night. Every little sound, every little creak in the house I put me on high alert, just looking, listening, making sure nothing was wrong. But nothing happened that night. It was calm and quiet after the incident. However, several days later, while completing the same evening activities, I found my daughter in the laundry room, looking out the back door window. Bean, what are you doing? It's time for bed. Mommy, the yellow-eyed man wants to come inside again. The Momo are chasing him and he's scared. He's not allowed to come in. We don't know him. Uh, go to bed, love. I immediately went to look out the back door. And in the distance, just behind our back fence, I could see two glowing yellow eyes. I sucked back a gasp as I double bolted the door, pulled the curtains shut, and sent my daughter back into my room to sleep with my husband and I for that night again. Early the next morning, I saged the house. Then, under my mother's instructions, also did a house blessing with holy water, just to be sure. Things were quiet for a long time, until they suddenly weren't. But that's a tale for another time.
So if you like that video, please like, share, and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Please stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.